Hello? Hello? Is, is this thing on? Okay, good. Uh, in this video, we're doing something a little bit different. Lee has sent me on an away mission. I am here on an alien planet, and I've been sent to obtain a certain material that is critical to the development of Game Guru Max. You can see he sent for me a cargo uh, box for me to acquire the material and place it in the box and that'll ship back uh, to him in England for further development. He, he was even kind enough to lend me his spaceship to get here. Now listen, I'm not saying Lee's an alien. Okay, I'm just not not saying it. So let's leave it there. Alright, so I see the objective. This material is a special material that is required for the development of Game Guru Max. Apparently it's it's what drives the engine. Um, so I'm heading towards the objective now. This planet is just bizarre. Look at what happens when I jump. Woohoo! Yeah, buddy! I'm flying! Alright, back down we go. That's carry forward we're getting closer look at that that is something else that is out of this world look at that i don't know what it is but lee says he needs it so i'm here to retrieve it i'm going to take it back and uh, get it to him as quickly as i can so we can make sure the game guru max gets developed on time in transmission <laughs> All right, enough fun with that. So I have had a blast doing this uh, setup here. This is my little alien world. And you can see I went kind of looking around for different um, objects and things to put into uh, the place. And the, the whole point of this video is to demonstrate the add FX behavior. Okay, so you see it all around you see it on every rock that's floating around you see it on the spaceship even that's really just kind of hovering just above the ground um, you can see it here on the the special material that i mentioned um, and all of these rocks are floating in different uh, levels right different hovering heights some of them are spinning in different directions at different speeds um, just I, I tried to mix it up as, as much as possible uh, so today's video clearly is about the ad effects uh, behavior. So let's get to it. Let's take a look at it and see how it works. So here we can see the, the behavior has been added to the object that I want to uh, control. So, uh, you know, we'll start with the space fighter, which is our ship. Our ship is just hovering slightly above the ground i didn't want a lot of hover effects i didn't want it to be dramatically just floating back and forth i kind of wanted to just you know uh, hover slightly above the ground because it doesn't have any landing gears so it just seemed like it would be you know one of those things that hover right above the ground so we have the hover uh well actually let's start with the general settings physics on naturally affected by gravity naturally is a mobile was interesting i didn't expect that but apparently it needs to be uh set to is a mobile i don't exactly know why don't ask me to explain it but i'll say this if you don't do that it's just going to ascend to heaven it just continues to go up to heaven so make sure that's uh, set and then uh, always active just so it doesn't plop to the ground when you walk away from it okay and then we have the behavior itself so the behavior is uh, we have to tell it which object that we're uh, that we're affecting, right? And that's because we could apply it to a nearby object and affect something else. Let's suppose that object that we want to affect already has a behavior, and we can't have two behaviors on a single object. Well, what we could do um, is we could have a nearby object that has the add of FX behavior applied to it. And then we can just reference the name of the object that we want to be, you know, hovering or spinning or whatever it is that we're doing. Now we don't have to do all of these. We can do just any one of these things or all of these things. Any combination is fine. Uh, we, we have the hover height 
and the lower height, what that means is basically the range at which this thing will hover, right? And it's, you know, 20 units from the ground. And remember, 100 units is one story. So try to keep it in a reasonable range. If you don't want a lot of hover effect, just make it, uh, you know, roughly the same or very narrow. Um, and what I did in this case, because I didn't want that hovered effect to be uh, super obvious, um, I ramped up the hover speed. Now this also threw me for a loop because it seems that the lower the hover speed, the faster it hovers. Don't ask me to explain it. That's how it works. So the high speed on this actually indicates a lower amount of hover, like a slower amount. So just kind of bear that in mind. I'm sure it has some sort of, you know, reason or rationale behind it, but I, I, I don't know how it works. So, all right, we have our spin checkbox. That just tells us that the object is going to spin. Now we saw that on some of the rocks. So let's just take a look at the rocks here now, all right? We have uh, the spin checked. In this case, it's spinning on its x-axis and its z-axis, and it's also going counterclockwise. Um, it's active at the start, so it's going to spin immediately. It's going to hover, and it's just kind of spinning in that, that weird direction at a, a rate of 50 speed. Um, so let's go take a look at that rock. It's just the one right next to the, uh, the container. Uh, let's see here. By the way, the container that we're looking at, I actually found this on Sketchfab, and it said Sketchfab uh, right here on the side. It's kind of neat. It says see polygons inside, Gaussian, big normals. Um, but it said Sketchfab on the side. I thought it was kind of cool. And what I did was I sent the, um, the texture to a guy on Fiverr, and I'll leave a link to his shop in the description. And I, uh, I paid him a little money to replace it with Game Guru Max, and uh, he did it like lightning quick, and he did a great, great job. So check him out if you're in need of that kind of service. Um, but here, let's let's take a look at the rock effect now that we understand what it's doing. There it goes. So it's spinning on its in its x and its z axis in an anti or uh, counterclockwise fashion, All right? So it's just kind of weird, but you can see that other one in the distance is doing a lot less, right? Um, so, you know, if you vary it up, mix it up a little bit, you can get a lot of variation in the rocks or whatever it is that you're applying it to. Ooh, there we go. All right, uh, let's see here. And then lastly, we'll look at the meteor. The meteor is really just another object, right? Just like anything else. And in this case, what I have it doing is really just the whole thing, right? So hover and spin and X, Y, Z and all those things. Um, the only difference with this object is this object has an emissive. And because it has an emissive, I can check the glow checkbox. And the glow checkbox take, makes use of that emissive. It, it, you know, if it was just a rock, it didn't have an emissive, it's not going to glow because... How's it going to glow? It doesn't have an emissive, right? So um, I purposely sought out an object that had an emissive so I could show that part off to you. And that's it. The, the, the behavior is relatively simple. The only other thing I want to make clear is because I have all these rocks scattered all over the place and each one of them has the FX behavior, it's not like these are all individual unique rocks. Most of them, like you can see, a, this is large rough rock seven. And the reason that is... Let me go to the detailed object list. Let's see what I say. It was a uh, large rough rock because there's there's a whole bunch of them in the in the scene, right? Now uh, we have you know one, two, three, four. All of these are unique names. If I click on them, each one is unique, and because each one is unique, it will operate independent of the others. Um, now I'm far too lazy to set individual behaviors for every single rock. So I really just duplicated the rock and renamed it. And it's the same behavior on all of them, just scattered them about so it wasn't obvious. But in this case, look at how these ones are named. This one's rock six and this one's rock six. So what's going to happen is this one, this rock six, is probably going to float and do what it's supposed to do. And this one is not. This one's going to sit on the ground and do nothing. And the reason is, is it can only affect one object, right? Uh, one unique object. And so really all you got to do is name it something different and now it's a unique object, right? Um, it, you can't have, you know, let's say 10 cars 
and have them all floating unless you each car was called you know car 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 one car two car three all the way to ten if it was just car then it's just, it's only going to affect the first one that it comes across right and it's going to probably be based on this uh order you know or something but uh just be aware of that you you want a unique name for each item all right uh but that's it that is the video if you enjoyed it if you learned something new please be sure to click the like button down below uh, if you're new to the channel or if you just haven't already subscribed yet now's a great time to do so please click the subscribe button and if you'd like a notification for when these videos come out it is kind of random it's just when i can get a, a video done it's not a set schedule or anything so the notification bell is gonna help you out in that regard uh, but that's it thanks so much for watching all the way through i really enjoyed this one this was a lot of fun i hope you did too and i'll see you in the next one bye for now